We knew it was coming eventually, but we finally got it on Tuesday morning. Justin Fuente is out at Virginia Tech, and at this we all assumed that it was going to be in December, right? Because the buyout, if you wait until December 15th, drops from $10 million down to $7.5 million, and they negotiated this thing. Whit, Bob, Whit Babcock is the athletic director there. He negotiated with Fuente, got that buyout down to $8.75 million, so split the difference right in between, and then went ahead and got this thing done. And that way, Fuente can start looking at other options. A month earlier, it cost him, you know, a million point two five to go on and knock that thing out and, and get it done and start working on whatever his next gig will be. Chris, I've got a just an absolute crap ton of names here that that we can go through. But this feels like it was done specifically so that Virginia Tech could go ahead and get started on their coaching search. And I think it's because they have found somebody that they want and they don't want to lose him before they end up firing Fuente. Is that kind of your read on this? No, I didn't really know why they did it now at this point in time of the season. And I feel like anybody who you think you can get is still gettable. The idea that agents and athletic directors aren't talking and don't know what's happening. Like, if you think somebody wants your job, and you've talked to their representation already, then then why fire your guy today when you know you're still going to be able to get that guy? Be, well, I think a lot of this goes back to LSU and the whole Les Miles situation back in 2016, right? You know, it, everybody assumed that Les was on his way out. He won, like, the last three games of that season and found a way to to win back the good graces of the fans and the players. And, and it was just such a it, – it, the whole thing was nuts back then. And people still remember that. And coaches will bring up, like, well, you don't even actually have an opening, so why would I wait? Hello, I'll be right back with you. You know, that's, that's the way I'm talking. you're not talking to coaches, Gary. None of these people are talking to coaches. No, no, but you're they're talking, talking to agents. agents. Right, but that's, that's who yeah, you're – Yeah, but the agents know what the hell's going on. Uh, yeah, you would think so. They're not stupid. They don't know how this shit works. Well, look, it, it is a little strange. If you and I know, and we're we're morons who talk on the internet, I assure you that the agents and the other coaches that might want that job, they also know. This is true. It is a little strange. So to act like they don't, like, and they live in some other bubble that we all don't live in, is dumb. So let's not do that. Fuente got fired off of a 48-3 to win over Duke last week. And I think that that's what this was. Like, go on and get him out. It, it's kind of the same thing that happened with it, right? You you announce it, which they, they had obviously already been talking about it. But you don't want Fuente to, to win out. You don't want him to beat Miami and then go and beat Virginia. And now he's won three straight, and it looks like they've got this But even if right he in. wins out, Gary, you still know that he's going to be fired. He still doesn't have the resume to save his job. Oh, agreed. Agreed, 100%. But that's that's what this I'm saying. Is, this, is is we, nothing, this is nothing like the Coach O situation. Okay, okay. In I, no way, state former fans, they're not similar at all, except for both schools fired their coach before the end of the season. Right, right. That's I, I'm with you. I'm talking about both of them won <laughs> ball games and then they announced the firing. You know, the week after. That's that's the only comparison there. So let's let's go on and break this thing down as far as uh, who the names are. Just I've got a whole list here, but let's let me let you spout some off the off well, the top of your head. Oh no, tell me tell me who you think the name is that they fired him so they could get him real fast. I think they anybody want, else could swap him up. I think they want Billy Napier. You think Billy Napier actually takes this job? I think he would take this job. Okay. I think I think Napier go. would prefer this job over the TCU job. Uh, maybe. I, I, I wouldn't, I mean, six in one hand, half dozen another again, it doesn't matter. They're the same yeah. job to me. Yeah, no, that's it. This exactly. is a bigger school. This is a bigger brand nationwide 20 years ago. But over the last five, 10 years, it's not. So they're the same job. Well, and you also got to look at the uh, the money separation, right? Like the ACC got their media deal done up quite a bit. We don't know what the Big 12 is going to be. Like their media rights deal doesn't come up for a little bit um, because of all of this uh, madness with realignment. Yeah, but you know you're going to have enough money to be able to do whatever you need to do. I mean, the ACC deal is unanimously agreed upon as the worst deal out there. 
Uh, so, yeah, well, yeah because, like, it's, because it's not, like, restructured until 2031, I think. That's right. like 10 more years. Like, so, the, so even though we all agree unanimously that that's a bad deal, because there's stability, you think it's better? Like, you can't have stability and keep right. This is, this is we're all trying to, to be, God, what's his ass from the bull? You know? Wait, from, from what? Yeah, what's his ass from the bull? Ah, who the hell? <laughs> yeah, baby. Jordan's sidekick. God, my name. Scotty Piven? It's getting old sucks. Yes. We're all <laughs> trying to be Scotty Piven, right? We want long-term security like the ACC deal, but we want way more money like the SEC deal. Like, yeah. you, you don't get both. You just don't. It's not what the world we live in is. Yes, exactly. It, it, it's like the uh, the NCAA uh, tournament deal, right? Like We've talked about uh, nowadays. Well, the NCAA is a, it's a terrible deal. It's, it's not enough money, and it's too long. It's right. a bad deal in every perspective. But but when it was signed initially for that first year or two, uh, everybody thought it was a no, great deal initially. That, 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 that's, just not, that's just simply not true. Everybody who knows what TV rights are valued as, the second that date deal was signed, it was already not, not nearly enough money. The <laughs> second that deal was signed, it was for substantially undervalued. So so let's let's get this back on Virginia Tech here. I, Billy Napier is is the one that I think that they are trying to go after. Okay. There are a bunch of other names. Do you have one in mind that you think they no. should should be I'm going given, after? I've given zero thought. I've given zero thought this. I'm kind of I'm kind of done trying to predict the future when it comes to what coaches are going to get hired where. It's well, then, a, let's let's do some rapid fire then. And I I just want your right. opinion. Would it work? Like, do you think that this would work at that school, et cetera, et cetera? Dave Clawson has been brought up. Do you think he would want to leave Wake Forest for uh, for Blacksburg? I, I don't I don't know that part, but I think Dave Clawson's a great coach and he'll be good anywhere he goes. I think so too. I, I don't think this is enough of a step up for him to leave Wake Forest personally. Jamie Chadwell. Yes, I think Jamie Chadwell is excellent. I think that's a home run. I think that would be a home run. Sonny Dykes has been brought up for it. Sonny Sonny will be better, preferably than Wendy was, but. I think Sonny has a ceiling. Sonny's never won the American. Like, yeah, that's a, at if some point look at what he's done. Somebody has to ask themselves. I like Sonny Dykes, by the way. Let's let's get that on the record. But somebody has to ask themselves: Do we think this guy's already reached the ceiling? Because if he has, like, he's not a spring chicken. He's not like some thirty-year-old out here calling ball plays and reinventing things. And he's never finished better than like fourth in his conference in his life. And he's not in a great conference. He's in a really good conference, but not a great one. Yeah, when he was at Cal, which I think would be, it, it's not, it's not quite to the same level as Virginia Tech. But Cal is like middle of the road, Pac-12. Virginia Tech should be, you know, top three or four school in the ACC. Uh, you know, I'm I'm curious. I'm curious what uh what everybody sees in him. I know that they understand the offense part. That plays into your idea of. You know, hiring the offensive guy that you don't have to worry about losing the play caller, right? So maybe that's but you have to. But at some point in time, you still have to play defense. Sonny Dykes has never had a good defense in his life. True, true. I mean, they, they did like, hire... So just, just because you're an offensive guy, like Jimbo's an offensive guy. Jimbo also understands the value of recruiting in playing good defense. Like, they, they, they're not, you know, mutually exclusive to one another. Yeah, no, you're you're not wrong about that. All right, so the next name on this list after Sonny Dykes, the one that has been brought up for basically every job since he left Mississippi State, would be Joe Moorhead. Do you see any kind of a fit there? Uh, I don't. I don't care about fit. I don't know how well the head coach Joe is. I think he's a really good offensive mind. That's and and that's kind of where I'm getting at with. Uh, with, with a fit part, right? Is is he a good offense or a good uh, a good head coach option? Like he was good at Fordham, but I, I think he's just better in an offense coordinator role. So I I kind of think he might just stay at Oregon. He might not take any of these. But either way, I don't I don't ever want to look at look at his resume and see Fordham again. I don't I don't I don't care about that. Like <laughs> what he did at Fordham is irrelevant now. At what what he did at Mississippi State is is what everybody should be looking at. You know. Well, no, I mean, you can look at what he did at Penn State, and you can look at what he's done in Oregon. All of those things are important. They, they went 
listen, what I did in preschool is completely irrelevant today. I'm a 40-year-old man almost. Yeah. Okay? It doesn't matter anymore. All right, what he did 15 years ago at Fordham, a school that nobody cares about in the world of college football. Hey, I think we lost you. You still there? Chris? <laughs> Oh boy, we were just having all kind of issues today. All right, so so we'll let Chris call back in here. Let's see. All right, so Joe Moorhead uh, is one. The next name that I've got on this list is Bill O'Brien. And good gracious, like Bill O'Brien, I he's up for basically everything. Chris, we got you back. Yeah, and okay. I never left. I never moved, and I was still where I was at, and I could hear you the entire time. It was, that is that's two back, times. I hung up, and I called you back. That is the weirdest freaking it, it, because it's happened twice now. Like you, you were talking, and it starts to cut out a little bit, and then there's no sound, and then hey, either way, uh, I brought up Bill O'Brien uh, because that one's been brought up, but I think Bill O'Brien's going to be brought up for like everything because of what he did at Penn State. Well, he he should get brought up for all these jobs because he's grossly overqualified for what he's doing. Agreed. But I also so, think that yeah, he's overqualified he, he needs for to be a head coach. Like I, I think he might be overqualified for Virginia Tech. God. I think he needs to be like I think he would be fantastic at USC, at LSU, uh back at Penn State if James Franklin leaves. Like Yes, he would be fantastic at any of those places. Just like he would be fantastic at Virginia Tech. And you see Virginia Tech as a lesser job because you're seeing what happened the last twenty years and not what happened the twenty years before that. And I understand that, but if they good coach and they got rolling again, they would be a national powerhouse. We have seen this. You can be a national powerhouse from anywhere in the God, I hate saying this, power five. Yeah, yeah. I mean, you you, you win correct. two years in a row. You go two years in a row and you lose one game in those two years, fans. You could be a national power anywhere. Yeah, yeah, I agree. I agree. Oh, we got a few then, more names then, on. Then hang on now. If oh, you ahead. agree, then why? If you agree, then why? Why is? Why should he not take this? Why is he overqualified for this job? I. Do you really I think Virginia Tech is a better job or a worse job than Penn State? I think that Penn State is a better job than Virginia Tech, but I never exact same job. I oh I, I don't agree with that at all. I think there's way more resources at Penn State, and it's it maybe maybe the recruiting is similar. No, it's not. Penn State's a better recruiting ground. It's it just it, it always attracts more talent than Virginia Tech has. I don't know. Maybe maybe there's not. Maybe I should be looking at this differently. But I, I just I see him in a bigger job. If he were to take this job, then absolutely. But I think he could turn it around into being a winner, and then I think he would get picked off by somebody else. Like I don't, I wouldn't foresee him staying at Virginia Tech. But I mean, none of these coaches do anymore. So you know, well, what does it even matter? I got a few more names. Uh, Chargers wide receiver coach Chris Beatty. He's got deep ties in Virginia. He was a former high school coach in Virginia. Won multiple state championships. Worked on a bunch of a Big Ten and ACC coaching staffs. Like understands recruiting, so there's a chance that he could get in there. You know, what do you think about the NFL assistant route? Like, would you go with somebody that hasn't been a head coach before? Well, I have no idea. I don't know who this guy is. I don't. I don't I'm, I'm not even close to being qualified to comment on assistant coaches in the NFL unless you're, you know, an OC or a DC and you've been around for a while and I know who you are. If you were with Babcock, the AD, would you look at possibly hiring Charles Huff, who has only been at Marshall for one year, but has a bunch of recruiting ties in Virginia? Would you hire somebody specifically for recruiting purposes? No, I think it's a terrible idea. Yeah, you want to hire a coach for the next seven to 10 years. You don't want to be doing this all the damn time. You want stability, and you hire somebody who's qualified and capable of doing the job. You do not make a hire just to, you know, basically band-aid a problem. Yeah, yeah, I'm, I'm with you. The next two on the list, I've got Marcus Freeman, defensive coordinator at Notre Dame. Do you think that he is ready for a, for a role like this, P5 head coach? Well, I'm sure he is, but, but I don't. There, there are qualities of top tier jobs and, 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 and lesser jobs in the in the in the P five and in the G five, and I don't know that Virginia Tech is going to hire some. Chris, we lost you again. 
I don't know what's happening. And I got nothing. All right, let's see. Chris, if you can mute and unmute and try it out a couple of times, I don't know. We'll, we'll see. <laughs> and call failed. Wonderful. Let me try and call him back. We'll, we'll just see what happens. This is unbelievable. Unbelievable. I'm still here. I, do, I don't know what's happening. I got no idea. I, I think you're, you're in a concrete cell because I have full service. And mine, I haven't moved. mine is showing full service. I have no idea. These wonderful cell phones. Either way, Mike Elko was the other name, and then I got one more. Uh, what do you what do you think about Mike Elko, Texas A and M defensive coordinator? I wouldn't hire any. I, once again, I I wouldn't hire anybody at Virginia Tech if you don't have head coaching experience, legit, real head coaching experience. Okay, so so one year would not be enough then, right? For Shane no. Beamer, right? No, okay. no chance. I don't know if Shane Beamer's been good enough. Like he's literally only be doing it because of his last name. Oh, 100%. Like, wouldn't you rather be at South Carolina than, well, maybe not. Virginia, South Carolina is not uh, what Virginia Why Tech is. Why would Virginia is. Tech hire him? You you were speaking about this. Like, this is one of the shittiest jobs in the country. I'm not, no, I'm not talking about Virginia Tech like that. Like, at all. What? You're throwing out a bunch of names of people that they were no way on earth they would realistically consider. Oh, these are all names that have already been reported in the media by, by different media. No, 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 no. no. Yes, that, that is, that is, that's right, that's right. That is media people throwing shit out because they are really bored and they're really lazy. And it's just easy to write columns and articles and, and have shows like this where we spend 25 minutes breaking down a coaching job. And none of these guys are legitimate candidates, but two or three of them. The only two that I foresee getting this job are Billy Napier and Jamie Chadwell. Like, I feel strongly about those two. So, and that's that's where I'm at with it. Thanks for listening to the Winning Cures Everything podcast. The website is winningcureseverything.com, and if you want to connect with us, we're on Twitter, at GaryWCE, at ChrisBGiannini, at Winning Cures, or you can email us, Gary at winningcureseverything.com, or Chris at winningcureseverything.com. Subscribe everywhere you need to subscribe, and we'll see you soon.